thought I'd do something a little bit different with today's video. Now I get asked a lot of questions about my materials and setup, so I thought I'd zoom the camera out, give you all a little glimpse behind the scenes at my basic setup and uh, just run you through all the materials that I use. And see it's a very small space, but it's good to have a dedicated area to work in. This is the small boom arm that I use to attach the camera to. Very simple little device just from Amazon. And most of you would have seen this palette that I use. It's just a little tin palette. Again, that's a cheap one. I use this little rack to store just my kind of go-to brushes. And then there's this miscellaneous messy area over there. And I'll get back to all of this in a little while and I'll talk about that a bit more in depth. And I'll start with the item I get the most questions about really and that's basically my setup basically for the for the drawing board and how I get it at an angle. Now I always used to use this which is a very simple little thing that I made myself. It's just two triangles of plywood just cut to the right angle and then I've just glued just another piece of ply on the top of that. It's about as basic as you can get really. I mean it works quite well. I can either tape straight to it or what I usually do is just this, just lay a board on top. Enables me to move it around or lay it flat. The only drawback of this system is that I'm kind of fixed really with two angles. So I've upgraded to this which is a Meaden tabletop easel. Now, quick disclaimer the people at Meaden actually sent me this for free to try it out, and I've got to say, I'm over the moon with this. A very simple device, really, but it enables me to have the board at any angle I want. I can go flat or my usual sort of 20, 30 degrees, or I can actually paint completely vertical if I need to. I have it set so I can move the board in and out. So just in case I want to tilt the board on its side or at different angles, it's easy to do that. That's a very handy, handy little tool. Also enables me to use either canvases or like this, which is just a sheet of board that's got a coat of gesso on it. And I can just swap between oil painting and watercolour without having to too much hassle basically. And it takes pretty much any size that I would need. I don't paint super large really. I think this is a 16 by 20. And if I just adjust this little clamp there, you can see it takes 20 inches very comfortably there's still plenty more to go on that and obviously any width really within reason but I'm sure it quite easily take like a three foot wide canvas or panel not that I often paint that large but the options there if I need it also folds up perfectly flat so if I need to take it on the road with me at all, it's quite compact. It's got a handy little handle and this little catch that just secures everything so nothing moves around in transit. I don't really plan on taking it on the road, but again, it's nice to have the option. So if I undo these little clips, you can see it's got a little metal line drawer there just for keeping pencils, pens, a few tubes of paint, there's some oil paint in there at the moment. Uh, but you can put anything you want in there and the dividers move around. So that's quite handy. I'll tell you later on how you can get 10% off of all these. Um, well, products from Meaden anyway, I'll mention that in a little while. And I'll just move on to my palettes. Now, most of these you've possibly seen, seen me use on the channel. I'll just start with this one, which is just a, it's kind of got like a little rubber, rubber seal 
around the edge there just keeps it airtight I use that for gouache paint quite a nice little palette and this is the one I use more often at home and in the studio it's just a little tin palette handy for plein air as well so it's got the little thumb hole it's got more than enough paint areas and got the four well three large sort of the large mixing well there on the left and then the two smaller ones and that's perfect for what I need it for this is a nice compact palette I think it's a Frank Herring palette and again I can get more than enough colors in there and the four little mixing wells that's perfect kind of fits in the pocket and this is an even smaller one it's a Winsor Newton one again pocket sized perfect for kind of like summer afternoons sketching outdoors and it's got this sort of handy little palette that comes out and then clips on the side so if you need additional space to mix nice simple little thing and this I've had for a long time it's kind of like the tin one before but it's a lightweight plastic version again very handy for plein air painting so it doesn't make your arm ache after a while and this is a Sienna plein air palette it actually fits inside a Richardson pochard box you can see it's got Sienna plein air printed on the top there on the lid it's quite a nice little palette as well it's very lightweight it fits in a bag nicely and this the basic of all the palettes really it's kind of like a little printer's ink tray type thing and you'll just lay your paints out on there it's good for the hate brush or larger brushes really where the brush doesn't really fit inside the paint wells uh, last but not least this this small Windsor Newton little travel box just little fold out mixing areas and um, piece of sponge now uh, this handy little bottle just comes out and you can fill that up with water and then the fits back in the palette there and that's another little mixing well and the lid is like a little water cup that actually clamps on the side i move on to some of my brushes it's keep my favorite ones really in this little wooden organizer thing that i think it was about five or six pounds online handy little thing and it keeps everything sort of like nicely organized and in one place and i'll just run you through to some of my go-to brushes and these are the hakes or harkays whatever you want to call them in different areas of uh, where they see one's quite old and fluffy the other one's got quite a nice edge I always cut them down so they fit inside my bag and I find them quite cumbersome when they're new actually like the hands are too long but good for washes perfect for skies and then again these other brushes uh, mops Escoda mops Ultimo that Alvaro Castanet signature brushes actually form quite a nice point when they're wet but good for big broad washes I mostly use them just to wet the paper down actually uh, but you can do whole paintings with them really uh, it's another mop brush but uh, this time it's a squirrel squirrel hair two different sizes of squirrel brush the larger ones size what's that 14 that's made by Jackson's and the smaller ones are Windsor Newton so triple zero both squirrel hair very soft but actually form quite a nice point still perfect for very sort of like loose kind of wet into wet type skies but great little brushes Uh, 
Uh, these are my favourites, really. These are my main go-to brushes. Kalinsky Sable. Not sure if you can read that on there. Rosemary and Co. Series 33. Lovely brushes. Quite pricey, but they really do do the job. Form a absolutely perfect point. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but they're bone dry and they're still holding a perfect point. And I've got the 12, 8, 4 and size 2 in those. And if I had to just choose four brushes, then it, it would be these four. So that's the Kalinskis. These are sable, uh, but red sable, so they're a bit cheaper. Don't form as nice a point. I mean, I've used these so much now. The name's not even on the handle anymore. But I'm pretty sure they're made by Ken Bromley. I think they're Ken Bromley Value Sable, something like that. Uh, but very nice brushes still. Hold a lot of water, a hot, lot of paint. Very good for kind of like scrubby areas, foliage on trees, grasses. Now these brushes probably get the most questions about these and they're calligraphy brushes. Had them for ages and they're battered and frayed and you know just knocked around a bit. Um, but they form amazing marks, really good for dry brush, trees, bushes, shrubs, branches, etc. And this one, again, not sure if you can see on the camera, but I put some super glue down by the ferrule. And it just makes it hard and separates the bristle slightly. So when it's new, if you push it flat like that, and then a couple of drops of super glue, in by the ferrule and then just allow it to dry and then it fans the brush out and just makes some very nice interesting marks and then these are cheap just maybe about one pound fifty two pound each these are some smaller ones with like nice fur branches on trees whatnot anywhere where you need a small thin mark I'll just talk about this what this brush as well. It's a rigger, again made by Rosemary and Co. It's a size 10. So it's like a giant rigger, I suppose. This red sable. And forms a fairly decent tip. I'll just wet the end slightly there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a quite a nice pointy brush. Can do whole paintings with this pretty much I mean it's good for sort of broad washes on skies but if I hold that up against like a standard rigger that most of you probably have that's like a size one or two synthetic rigger you can see the difference in size but it actually forms a very nice point and can do some good fine work with that can I just move on to my paints I keep them in this handy little box which I think is probably for keeping nuts and bolts and screws or nails in it. It's got these little dividers so you can move them around to make the sections larger or smaller. And I just keep all my palette in there. So that's my darks, greys, blacks, ultramarines, cobalt, ceruleans, it's the reds, yellows, raw sienna, burnt siennas, uh, some browns and some random blues and then just some random odd Paints with that green gold Daniel Smith paint. There's a ultramarine violet there, Momeri blue. I've got some gamboge and cobalt violet. Use many different brands, uh, like, quite like Lucas. It's nice, sort of quite heavily pigmented paint, but comes in 24 mil tubes. So I mean, I like that. Get quite a lot of paint. The Memories come in 12 mil tubes, I think. Again, very nice paint. Obviously, Daniel Smith, I'm sure you all know about that. Also use Jackson's Art, their own brand, artist paint. Very good quality, decent price. 
also just some Cotman's and some random brands actually dating around the artists uh, very good quality and that's my paint also nice handy little box if you need to take it away it's quite small fits in the boot of your car easy that's my YouTube play button that YouTube sent me it's a little thing made out of Lego quite pleased to get that through the post there's actually a video in my shorts feed of me making this on a time lapse just for a bit of fun you can check that out if you want I'll have to do until I get the silver or gold play button it's my water bucket basic simple thing you can get in any art store one side for clean one for dirty these little holes on the side I think it's possibly for holding brushes maybe something like that but I never use it for that and handy little lid these are my go-to pencils Blackwing matte a nice soft pencil but you can get a very fine light line with them or the hard you press essentially get a very nice sort of like dark black line but it's not shiny graphite they come like this and you just obviously sharpen the end however you want it uh, got the eraser on the ends quite handy uh, some masking tape pretty self-explanatory I'll just move on over to this miscellaneous side I suppose you could call it it's a bit messy that's my mechanical pencil sharpener type thing um, there's a few tubes of acrylic paint a um, little terps jar there's some masking fluid and just some oil painting mediums a little palette knife that's just some acry acrylic gesso solvents and clear gesso it's actually quite handy if you've got like a failed watercolor wash you can use that give it a coat of clear gesso and then you could paint over the top of it or add to it with pastels or something like that it's just some random brushes large hake brush uh, these are quite interesting if you're into oil painting or acrylics especially it's like a window cleaner's squeegee uh, you can make nice sort of sharp straight lines with that and uh, just an old wallpaper scraper similar type of thing really sort of sharp lines and you can scratch into watercolor with those uh, there's a little GoPro camera use that for filming different angles uh, let's have a little look at the lights actually get questions about that occasionally it's just a clamp on loft light that I attached onto a uh, microphone stand there and I use that that's my light that I can move around so I can put that wherever I want it and over here it's got a swivel top type type lamp that you can adjust the angle on it and I have that clamped onto the shelf yeah, but you can put that at any angle you want really And I'll show you the bulbs that I use for those. They're more important, really, than the lamp. They're uh, LED filament daylight bulbs. And I'll try and get that on the camera, see if you can see that. This is a 6,500 lumen. Uh, you want, like, a minimum, really, of 5,000 or 5,500 Kelvin actually not lumen and I'll just show you below underneath the desk just got my sketchbooks there um, just some random little tins with paint and whatnot but down the bottom here is where I keep my paper buy it in full sheets and then cut it to the size that I need it various brands Saunders Valhong Canson Arches or Arsh whatever you want to call it and um, what we've got over here some blue paper towel everybody needs a bit of that and this is my heat tool that I used to dry watercolors with I find it better than a hair dryer 
this gets quite a bit hotter and just basically just dries it quicker got that in hobbycraft I think it's possibly only about 10 pounds but a very handy little thing saves a lot of time really well there you go that's the little look around my studio or my studio area in the corner of my office basically and I said at the start of the video I'll let you know how you can get 10% off mead and art products if you look in the description of this video I'll have a a link and a 10% code and you can go on their website and get 10% off everything over there I'll be back again next week with another video so until then happy painting and I'll see you next week bye for now